So, have you ever wondered how you can generate random numbers and values for your games easily? You know the kind of randomness that can create procedural terrains, make random dungeons and enemies, or even generate a fully unique nemesis for your adventure. Well, today we're going to see that in our modern game engines, that's actually quite easy to do. Hello everyone, I'm Mina, and in this new Godot 4 C-Sharp tutorial, we're going to see a few basic tricks for creating random numbers and vectors in this game engine. Oh, and by the way, just before we dive in, don't forget that if you want to support the channel and get some exclusive rewards like mini-games, tools, plugins and assets, you can check out my brand new Patreon. Plus, if you go for the highest square member status, you'll even get to vote for future tutorial topics at least once a month. So, feel free to have a look. So, the first technique for quickly creating random numbers in Godot is to use the engine's built-in random functions. In c -sharp, we can access them via the GD global namespace, and we usually use three methods, gd.randf, gd.randi, and gd.randrange. Each can produce either a random integer or a random float, but only the last one allows you to specify directly a range for this random generation. So basically, if you use gd.randf, you'll get a random float between 0 and 1. This can be super nice to quickly compute an event that has a certain chance of happening, for example a critical hit or a drop rate of a rare item, since a chance of x% percent of something happening can be coded like this. For example, 60% is equivalent to 0.6, so if you get a random float in the 0-1 range and it's below 0.6, you've effectively gotten an event that had 60% chance of happening. If you use gd.randi, you'll get a random integer that can go from 0 to the maximum integer value minus 1, so 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. We don't usually go that high, except for example for IDs, so to easily restrict this upper bound, you just need to use a modulo and pass in your range max value. Note that this modulo value, this upper bound, will be excluded from the result meaning that, for example, this formula will give you an integer between 0 and 19. Finally, the gd.rand range can be used for both integer and floats in c -sharp. The type of the generated result will depend on the type of the range min and max values that you pass it. In other words, if you pass in integers for the min and max bounds, you'll get a random integer in this range as a result. And here the bounds are included, so this time you would get an integer between 0 and 20, for example. But if you pass floats for the min and max values, then you'll get back a floating value. Actually, it will be a double variable in c -sharp that you can then convert to a float if you want with an explicit cast, like this. Typically, using this range range with 0 and 1, so integers, will give you back an integer that is either 0 or 1 so that can act as a 50-50% chance of something happening. And of course, using it with some arbitrary float values can be a great way of getting random heights for a procedural terrain, or random statistics for your game items. Another cool trick is the array.pickRandom method. As the name suggests, this function is a quick and easy way to pick an element from a good array at random, instead of having to manually compute a random index and then get the element at this position. However, when using c -sharp, be careful, because this is a function of the Godot array structure, not of the built-in c -sharp array structure. Meaning that if you create your data like this, then you'll be making a c -sharp array, and you'll need to use the index-based method to get a random item inside it. If you want to create a Godot array, you'll need to import the godot.collections package, and then you'll be able to create your Godot array of the right variable type, and then use the pick random method to get your random element. Something very important to remember is that computers don't do real randomness. Indeed, they do what we call pseudo-random number generation where you start from a specific value, and then you just do some crazy calculations to produce new numbers that aren't too similar at each step. 
So as you can see, all those numbers taken as a whole do look pretty random. As humans, we can't see any logic that ties one to the other. But behind the scenes, this is all just a very strange mathematical progression that starts from one arbitrary point. Which means that if you restart from the same point, you'll actually get the exact same weird series of numbers every time. Which kinda defeats the purpose of randomness, but can still be useful during development to get more controllable debug scenarios. Alright, so with that in mind, by default, when you use the gd.rendf, gd.rendi, and gd.rendrange functions, you rely on Godot's readily available main random number generator. So it's super easy to use in your scripts, but it also lacks a bit of customization. Basically, the only thing that you can change here is the seed, so the initial starting point for the underlying pseudo-randomness algorithm. And you do that with the gd.seed function. If you call this in a ready function in your scene with an arbitrary fixed number, then each time you run your game, you'll get the exact same random numbers whenever you call the built-in random functions, which again can be really cool during development. Also note that by default, if you don't call it, Godot will auto-call its gd.randomize function to have the seed change every time, and so you'll get, uh, well, really random values, at least in the eye of the players. That being said, if you want to configure your random generation a bit more, you may want to use your very own random number generators. And the great thing is that this way you can have several random generators in parallel, each with their own seed and state, rather than always relying on the same main generator. Other than that, those generators can be configured and used like the readily available one. You can set its seed, randomize the seed if need be, and then call its rendf, rendi, and rend range methods. The last technique I want to discuss today is how to create random values thanks to procedural mathematical noises. I actually already talked about it in this previous video of the series, where we used such a noise to have our screen shake randomly. So just as a quick reminder, mathematical noises, or simply noises, are mathematical functions that generate values that appear random, again with pseudo-randomness, but are usually consistent, they're coherent, we say that they are continuous, so they create natural-looking patterns that can be used for terrains, textures, and other visual effects. And more precisely, in Godot, a really cool feature is that it comes with a built-in math noise generator, the fast noise light variable type, that allows you to instantiate a mathematical noise system that will give you back pseudo-random continuous values whenever you need. Though the neat thing with math noises is that, contrary to the simple number generators we've discussed so far, they can produce more than just single values. They can also produce 2D or even 3D vectors. Typically, a 2D noise can be a great way to generate a procedural relief or biome map for a game, and have logical, continuous areas that make for more realistic results. The fast noise light utility allows you to generate noises of various types, the full list is available in the Godot official documentation page, and each can have various applications, some pretty obvious because you might recognize some patterns from the world around you, and some a bit more surprising, like using this kind of math noise to create some audio zones and have dynamic soundscapes. But in any case, here you go! You now know a few basic tricks and techniques to produce random numbers of vectors in your Godot c -sharp games. I really hope you liked this quick video, and of course, I want to thank all of my Patreons for the support. In particular, a huge thank you to my Square member Achilles, and to Jose Menapache, who just joined as a line member. Also, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones, and perhaps even tell me in the comments down below what ideas of good tricks you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.